Okay. Our, our first speaker is Dr. Jaya Seelan. Dr. Jaya Seelan is a senior lecturer and a researcher and also lab manager, molecular mycology and pathology. And also Dr. Jaya is a scientific and research field, is a PhD in molecular mycology and pathology in Clark University in Boston, USA. And also doctor is a research professor uh, in Seoul National University in Korea. About Dr. Jaya is a 15 years experience in working in mushroom diversity, cyclogenetics and evolution, fungal methodonomic, fungal biotechnology, and also doctor published in local and international journals, mushroom environmental education modules, and also chief editor, editor for journal of tropical biology and conversation. Dr. Jaya also in Persatuan Penyelidikan Cendawan Malaysia, PPCM, as a member, and also PI National and International Grant Projects worth 3.5 million. Dr. Jaya is in the Mycological Society of America as a member and also as a member in the Malaysian Society of Applied Biological. Consultancy for Mushroom Products and Cultivation and the JKNS Technical Committee. And Dr. Jaya also won uh, Anugara Chamalang Award in 2010 and 2020. And also uh, Whitley International Research Award in 2015 and 2016. An International Association for Plant Taxonomy Award in 2015, and KFAS Korean Foundation Advanced Studies in Fellowship in 2018 and 2019, and JICA Training Fellowship Award in 2016 and 2017. I'm extremely welcome, Dr. Jay Silen, for the today session. Hello. Hello, Doctor. Hello. One today we are gonna uh, you know thanks for thank you all for the first introduction okay thank you uh, Madam Sundarmani and uh, I would like to thank uh, Prof Bala for arranging uh, this and also Professor I mean Dr Jason as well uh, to give or deliver uh, one of the talks as part of the research methodology okay so can you all hear me clearly right. Yes, doctor. Okay, great. Okay, so if any questions, you can interrupt. Okay, before I further my talk, okay, I would like to, I mean, you can address me as a Jaya of Sealand. Um, so basically today, uh, apart from all the research methodology and research articles that you all are discussing for the past two days, and uh, today, what I'm going to do is uh, actually to bring you all to the mainstream of science, uh, which is uh, a field that I'm involved in, which is uh, mycology, which is the study of mushrooms. So in perspectives of science, when you're talking about science and social science, okay, and even a business uh, and also arts, actually, engineering or any kind of thing, okay, there will be a lot of fusion here within the talk. Okay? So once you have any question, please uh, raise your hands or you can interrupt me while I'm giving the talk. Okay? So let's start uh, for now. Okay, let me share the screen. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir, it's visible. Uh, yes, doctor. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so today, um, let me bring you all. I'm attached to University of Malaysia Sabah, uh, actually uh, under the Institute for Tropical Biology and Conservation. So when I'm talking about a lot of uh, science stream here on the aspects of mycology, please don't get, you know, bored or any, any kind of, uh, you know, frustration. Because what I'm going to talk today is based on my experience of working, how am I arranging the data? How am I writing the data and how I'm publicizing the data. So these are the three main components that I would like to expand in this today's talk. So there are a lot of images, there are a lot of, uh, you know, data that I'm going to show and how we can work on these in many different ways. 
So let's see. If you are a doctor. Yeah. Uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, we cannot hear, uh, hear your voice because uh, it's very low. Can you increase your voice, doctor? Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Can you hear me now? Ah uh, yes, doctor. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. It's a technical error, I guess. Okay, so let me uh, bring you again to the front of the uh, slide. And then uh, as for the introduction, can you all hear me clearly right now? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So qualitative versus quantitative data. This is uh, one of the, you know, the battle that everybody always will fight with, you know, whether it's uh, arts or science, okay? Many different people, uh, they have a different perception. Many different researchers, they have different perception. For me, when I talk about quantitative and qualitative, it's uh, how do I apply these into my research and also to visualize and publicize my work to many different people. So in my terms, in my own terms, that I believe that qualitative data and quantitative data is something that needs three entities that always need a collaboration and also with different expertise and the fusion between all the mindsets okay so these are the major things that i applied to my research for the past 16 years and i've been doing this with lots of collaboration and uh, i can view that science is just not uh, one particular school okay? the science can be seen in arts fusion or even in quantitative, uh, qualitative uh, surveys and questionnaires, things like traditional knowledge, mycological knowledge, and uh, what are the medicinal information. So these are the streams that we can relate our mainstream to the downstream. So when you talk about fusion, fusion is here, it's based on different expertise groups. So when you are fusing the science, that science uh, knowledge will be uh, impact as an energy forms where many minds works in a different way. So when you publish or when you uh, showcase your results, it will be a bigger impact instead of a smaller impact just for yourself. Okay. So we need to make the science open for everybody. So when you are considering the qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis, in my terms, quantitative is more important to a microbiologist like me. However, I would also integrate the qualitative analysis when I do a lot of surveys, a lot of interviews, a lot of uh, questionnaires, based, things like that. So how we can make the qualitative to a quantitative is also another technique that every researcher can be, uh, you know, um, to get their yeah, main um, ideas and ideas and share their ideas. Okay, move on to the next one. So in my experience, before I venture into any of the topics, let's say if I'm going to do, you know, how to make a, a chicken curry, I need to know what is the chicken is about, you know, what are the curry is about, uh, what are the ingredients is about, is there any kind of, so the, the, the literature mining is a very basic thing that every researchers have to go through, okay? As you all are the scholars, you might know that in your field, how depth is the knowledge of that particular field uh, by do, looking into the literature. Because literature mining is something that upcoming um, in a forms of bibliometric analysis or cytometric analysis. So you still can publish all these literature works for your particular topics that you are looking into. So thorough research or thorough search on the specific topic should be done before you analyzing the data. Just, you know, when you are looking into a data, it cannot be just within the particular location. It has to be expanded throughout the states or the level of, you know, the countries or even to the continent level. So once you're looking into the patterns, then you may say that, okay, for sure, okay, the patterns are different. So how many types of patterns, whether it's a years based on years or whether based on the type of authors, or whether based on countries or and etc. Because I'm going to show you here before uh, the writing what are the things that I have been doing and how do I publish this. Okay. 
So when literature mining, you have diff many different platforms. Okay, this is a, just a snapshot of um, you know a, a particular work that I've been doing, and uh, these are the kind of mushrooms uh, research papers that we can track down until 1853. All the documentation, all the conference papers, all the published articles, whether it's a book or even the research uh, journals. So when you when you are doing this kind of um, you know cumulative and also a very thorough search, then you can see how the pattern of the publishing on a particular topic is itself. So when a particular topic is being published, okay, you can see in depth information like from which year to which year. It's up to you whether you want to do a 10, uh, 10 years or twenty years base. So when you're looking into that particular subject. It's based on your interest, how you are going to showcase your data or results. So these are the first major steps that I always do when I start a research on a specific topic. So this is just based on a specific topic here. And I'm giving you an example. How do I search? And there are many different platforms for you all to, you know, Scopus and uh, PubMed, Dimensions. And, uh, there are other platforms as well. Even you can do manually, but manual usually takes a lot of time. But the keywords and the search terms, everything is important when you are looking into the literature. Okay, so this is the kind of bibliometric analysis that I will do based on the papers that I have accumulated. Okay, previous publications are very important for us to. Uh, look at and you see the different type of analysis that you can do based on the bibliometric analysis. This is even though it's a qualitative, but you are turning into the quantitative basis, okay? Because you are involving numbers and accurate numbers, even though it's a bias sometimes because maybe you can get that paper in a particular website, but some you cannot get it. So that one you need to mention in your article in the methodology section. How biased is the system is, or is there any weakness on the uh, system? You need to address all the weaknesses as well, even though you are getting all the significant results and stuff like that. So, particular search for mining for literature, it's very important when you are starting a PhD or even any research for a researcher, because this will help us how to see. Like for example, here as you can see. Which are the institutes or the university that mainly publishing this particular topic that I have chosen? Okay, it's in a model that you all can apply, or we can share, or we can do many different beautiful things in this uh, particular bibliometric. Because this can be considered as a publication, and I will show you why this is important before you start your research. Okay, even it doesn't matter whether it's a science or arts, you still can do. Uh, in arts also and in sciences. Okay, so based on the publishing institutes and also publishing authors and the focal group of the terms that you are using for the paper searching. You can see these are the terms that you can get from the viewers. Viewer, it's a platform where you can, it's a software that you can download and make sure that you arrange all your publication date and then also the numbers is very important. Based on the number analysis, you can generate these uh, networking analysis for you to discuss in the results and discussion part for a paper publication. So far, any questions, guys? Okay, so if Sir, bibliometric analysis is a software. Yeah, it's a software, yes. Yeah. It's free, freely available. It's a, it's a free software. You can download uh, from the any type of bibliometric analysis. You can download. Uh, you just go into the scientometric or bibliometric. You can get download. Uh, there are many different softwares available. So you may choose uh, what is the best for you and what is the uh, best uh, user friendly. So that's how you can uh, you know download the software from the website. So for uh, taking this publication only bibliometric analysis is there or any other software is also there? Actually, this bibliometric analysis is your literature publications. That means before you do uh, your literature, 
uh, you have to collect the papers, right? So based on the collecting papers and everything, you are turning those uh, hard work, the time that you spend into a publication before you publish your inner part of your core research. Understand? Okay. okay. So I hope I, I have answered your question, but throughout we can still uh, learn and you guys ask questions based on that in between. Yeah? Okay, so when I apply these uh, tools into my research component before I start my research, usually they take, this takes about one to six months. So whenever I work on this, okay, so these are the kind of methodologies, how you are looking into the bibliometric analysis into, in, in the terms of methodology, these are the kind of things that preparation for the file before you turning into a qualitative to a quantitative because when it's becoming a quantitative you need to do a lot of statistical methods to estimate what is the number of publication what is the uh, you know the number of uh, different countries which are the list of top two journals I mean 20 journals things like that so in our in our objective here it's pretty simple we wanted to look into a particular group of fungus that you know uh, relevant to the ants associated then we did the search throughout the continents and we categorized based on the continents and the countries. And the continent wise, you can see the, you know, the lower number to the higher number and then how much of the portion. And then the published papers in the impact factor on the past 20 years, it can be correlated as, as the papers published and the journal impact factor. And also the network analysis you can do very beautifully in those BIOS Weaver as a software, where the research main topics is talking about what? Okay, so let's say here the main topic in the green is basically talking about taxonomy. Okay, but when I want to know what are the papers is about, I'll use all these keywords to generate these networking analysis to find out what are the major terms that they use in that paper. So this is one of the good finding from uh, you know this uh, search and be able to uh, send for publication. Okay, so this is how you may start because maybe this is something uh, very old for you, but this can be new as well. But there is a lot of uh, statistical uh, analysis that you can do in R and you make wonders from the previous published data as part of your publication. So that's why I say, don't waste the bibliometric, I mean the search, uh, the literature mining that you are including in your chapters for PhD because that can be publishable if you are doing some analysis and to see how the network of that particular research that you are doing is impacting in many different angles, whether it's uh, based on countries or very many based on just the focal group only in medicine or is it on towards the ecology, something like that. Okay, so as you can see this, this is like fresh from the our name. So recently we finished uh, a bibliometric analysis for the mushroom poisoning, where it's basically involving a lot of different types of mushroom in the clinical management. So we pull out all this information, okay, and we did the mining, and then we get to publish in particular in high impact. Journals. So these are the, uh, the the wonders that you can do from a bibliometric analysis. Okay, so. Apart from what I have been doing before the research, and then now, what is my research? And then after that, what is the next step after the research? Okay, so I'm working on uh, different types of research, whether it's ecology, whether it's a taxonomy, whether it's a medicinal application, or whether it's a biotechnological application. So I'm working on many different aspects that involving a group of organisms called the fungi, or we can say mushrooms, okay? Fungi is in uh, particularly, uh, which are the mushrooms that you can able to see, and also the mushrooms uh, that you can't see under the naked eye. So when I'm talking about the kingdom fungi, okay? How do I see publication is very important. Publication is also considered, you know, when you are establishing photos of your collections. That is very important because you have your copyright because those are considered as your contribution to science as well. Because only you know better when you are doing your own topics or in the depth knowledge on the particular area. Okay, 
So here you can see how beautiful they are and why I'm so obsessed with uh, lots of mushroom research. Huh? Okay, and in India, of course, uh, there, there, there are a lot of collaborators uh, that I'm working on, which is all the, you know, Western Guards, mushrooms, all are beautiful. So I think even though if it's not only for science stream, but the arts people, why I'm working towards the arts people, because the fusion makes the publication impact much more powerful because I see in a different angle when uh, it comes to science because science and arts is a fusion so we have to integrate them both in a different manner but when it comes to publication yes of course you can divide into art and science or you can integrate them for example citizen science citizen science is one of the best uh, example that how science can in be integrated into the arts form okay so I will bring you all to another a different facts that you all can, uh, you know, get adapted. So you see, when you are looking into uh, the facts about a research, okay, when you are looking into a research, definitely as a researcher, you are mainly focusing yourself into a publications and your scholar works. Okay. However, it's your responsibility for you to explain your research to the common people. Or the layman okay so for the layman understanding you need to know what are the basic characters what are the things that you can explain in a simple manner that is very very crucial job for a scientist so here there are some forms of uh, publications or modules that i'm going to talk about just to you know add on to the publication world okay it's not just when it comes to publication it's considered everything what you publishing it's a publication okay not just the papers and books only your modules your posters or your you know the awareness programs things like that so these are all involved in the publication process so you need to expand from your field to a different thing okay so that's what i'm doing so as you can see from here languages are important you know, arts are important in a way of what I see from the mushrooms, okay, what are the shapes, colors, because these are all stimulates from a children level to the adult level. Even for a common people, they can understand what is the nutrition mode of the fungi, how fungi thriving into the forest, what are they giving to people, what are the benefits, what are the impact in the environment, or are they good or are they bad. So you need to ex uh, expose these uh, facts in a way of publication. So this is what I do and we are doing as a teamwork. So not only that, okay, apart from science, you may also uh, produce a lot of different outsource, I mean products from the uh, your research. So for example, here is one of the children's book that we published uh, in two years back by introducing the animal or the nature or the kingdom of fungi in a different way of cartoon bits, okay? So the animation symbol, and then sometimes RTC, and then we need a designers. So we integrate with many different people. So it's not just the fungi, because if I just focus on the fungi, okay, I can't collaborate to, you know, to outcast my, my beautiful fungus to many different people. So what we do, we do integration, to, 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 you know, to expose whatever the facts of science to common people, okay? I need the science to reach everyone, not just our researchers only. So that's my style of working. And this is how I was trained as well from my supervisor, my supervisor, supervisor, so everybody. And we are working as a team that makes us more fun, okay? That's why we say, fun guy right so it's a fun and the science is always fun to see when our products is out there okay and when you talk about nutrition mode of uh, fungus so how do i integrate this into a pictorial form infographic because nowadays infographics uh, your posters are considered as publication as well. so when you are starting a phd work okay you need to plan all these uh, uh, how you are going to outcast your your research results so this is not just the publication but this is 
should be revolving in a different forms of way of publishing, publicizing your work to many people. Because now in this era, everything is about visibility and also a lot of social media, things like that. But I'm not a big fan of social media, but the thing is we have to, you know, we have to like, you know, showcase our results, showcase our findings and things like that. So when I look into a global diversity of the soil microorganism or even fungus, okay, there are a lot of many different things that lacking still in the tropical area. So what we can do? Okay, that's that's my job to address at least about 70% of my work until in my retirement, I guess. Okay, so that's how I, I have thought of it and that's what I'm working towards. It. Okay, so the history of, uh, you know, the history of a publication, okay, on a particular journal, or on a particular group, you need to know the history. So wh where does this uh, the law comes from? Where does this uh, fungus comes from? Everything needs a proper way of organizing the history of the particular organism. Like for example, many people know about Darwin, Charles Darwin, okay? Uh, he's the creator of evolution and stuff like that. But the, the, the evolution story is always uh, fascinating because he has, you know, found a lot of species that now we know what are the names, okay? But how do they evolve? How do they, you know, surviving in the environment? It's a unique thing that for us to understand that. So here, I'm not going to talk about all the hardcore on the science subjects, but I'm telling you all the, you know, the search for the information for you to, you know, publish and for you to, you know, publish in a good journal you need to understand the history of the organisms or history of the system that work. Okay, for example, like business models, you have so many business models, psychology, they use a lot of models. So where does the model comes from? Definitely you will be looking into the history and then you are comparing between the, you know, how does the whole system till until now that it has been adapted, it has been evolved. So these are the process of getting to know, uh, you know, the history behind it. It's, it's a process for us to publish papers in a very good term. So what we do here, very systematic way of uh, organization for our lab work, okay? Where science works definitely needs a lot of sample collection. We go into the jungle, we go explore, we take photographs. We get, uh, we get a lot of photographs. We take a lot of good, good, good photographs so that the photographs can be published when it's publishing the paper. So GPS location, because all these data is a raw data that need to be applied in terms of, uh, you know, uh, to, to have a good journal publication, that's all, okay? But where does this publication leads to? So that's the question next after the publication. So as a researcher, are you going to stop there only? So that's a question that you need to ask. So as a researcher, you need to explain this to a common people. How to you know uh, how to publish this uh, layman way of understanding uh, your research group so that's how we work we integrate all the morphological characters the chemical analysis and then the dna analysis so these are all looks very complicated right but some of y'all are science streaming i think you all understand but for arts people this is something new but how we can work together that's the question so where do you come in when I'm going to publish this work. So these are the questions that uh, you need to team up and work together as a team. Because I'm not just working towards society, but I'm working with the arts group, artists, designers, and also web developers. Okay, so these are the things that we can integrate and we can produce a lot of good data. Okay, for example, I'm going to uh, you know, share the story of the, you know, the cup fungi that you can see in a common forest nearby your backyard and stuff like that. Because they always appear in a, on a dead branch or dead logs. You have seen these in many, uh, you know, photographs. But when I'm collecting this data, okay, in my way of collecting data is I need to know the whole history about the fungus, okay? How are they characterized? And where do they are distributed? Is it just basically only in Malaysia or outside Malaysia? I need to search thoroughly. 
So what we do, we do continent wise. So when we do continent wise, there will be a big impact because we are looking into a global thing, not just basically focusing on Malaysia. But I, I am interested in the Malaysian species, even though I'm you know Malaysian scientist, but I just need to know how do these species are widespread into worldwide. That is very important to us. So science aspects looking into different way of thinking where the species information needs to be gathered for the whole global, then you have to describe as a new species if it's a new. Okay, that's why it's a very important job for researchers to, uh, you know, before you publish, you need to verify your data. Okay, how good is your data collection? It's very important. So this is how we work in our lab. And uh, the DNA analysis, usually the next step. Okay, the next step is, of course, the DNA analysis, how, how closely they are related, how beautiful, you know, you, as you can see, this species doesn't exist in Malaysia, but now we do have. Why? Because a data collection is something that will tell you whether we have the species or not. And in terms of the phylogenetic relationship or the evolutionary relationship, we can see now that, you know, Borneo has quite a number of species within the subfamily. This is how the interpretation. But how are you going to publish this as a layman concept? So what am I going to do? This one we can publish in a scientific journal. But how we are going to publish this science knowledge to a common people? That's the question. I will answer to that question later when you see the last a few slides. Okay, so sometimes the ecology, the taxonomy makes us wonder how do the species survive in this environment? Why they look so many different colors? Why they look so weird? Why they have hairy? Sometimes they don't have hairy. Why do they only specifically growing in that particular forest? So all these data, very complicated. Data. And when we collect, we have to organize these as part of it. So this is a pretty, uh, you know, three years project. What when you complete it, then you are saying that your publication is, you know, very good impact publication. It's not something that you can just, uh, you know, publish within a one day or two days. No, it's a cumulative thing that you need to collect all the data and then you get to publish a good thing. That's all. Okay, so that's uh, one of the mushrooms. And then the second one also, it's a pretty different uh, groups of mushroom that medicinal value. And uh, we work on the medicinal group as well, where they analyze for medicinal properties, things like that. So the research arrangement, how do I work is when it involves ecology, then it's a part of ecology work. When it involves, it's a medicinal thing, it's a different scope of work. When it involves uh, taxonomy work, it's a different scope of work. So when I think all of these, then I can gather all this information in a different way for me to publish in a different journals and different publications. So as you can see, these are all found in India as well. But how far the research is in India on this, we never know. Okay, there was one only the recent one out for publication. But other than that, what are the aspects? We never know. So that's why I say collaboration is always wonderful to look into different aspects. So the distribution mainly in the continent one. How do I gather? Of course, when I say GPS, this is what I can do with my GPS data collection. So data collections from GPS involves many different kind of positions based on the global positioning system. But how we can make a model system. So you, I use this uh, max entropy model, which I learned as well. Uh, it took a while, but the thing is, it was a very beautiful analysis that I can use just based on GPS location. Where do they are distribution? Okay, as you can see from the past literatures to the current data here for Malaysia. So that is like a complete package of you know information that we can deliver to many different people. Okay, and then also the DNA work of the mushrooms, how they are distributed, how many species they are, how do they 
you know, whether there's a new record or whether there are new species, these are all matters to a scientist like us, where in a science stream, huh? not arts only. Okay, then we have a lot of uh, complex groups, which are, how do we arrange these complex groups? So when we are doing working, uh, some species, we cannot even tell the differences to label them as a species. So what we do, of course, we have to get, go back again, do more collections to verify the collection data, and then we have to do a bigger analysis for us just to focus on one particular species because sometimes they are cryptic. Okay, when they are cryptic, it's so difficult for us to de detect based on just one particular gene. So we have to move on to a different gene. We have to figure out the other genes, how they, they work, and then only we can solve the problem in this particular taxonomic problem. So there are a lot of different ways of uh, how integrating the data collections, also you know, data analysis. So data collections and data analysis are the two tools that always come together where you have to mainly focus on these two for a big impact factor journal. Because when your journal is when it's a common story, people won't, you know, won't cite that much. But when you have an interesting story on your particular data, people sell your story. They will refer to other paper and then they will cite your paper. So this is how we can increase our paper. But don't worry about citation, things like that. Because recently I find people are so obsessed with citation. When you are producing a quality journal, when you are producing a quality data, it takes time. It takes time 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It's not within one day you get highly cited unless you publish in science or nature, of course. But countries like India, Malaysia, Vietnam, Middle Asia, we are struggling scientists, researchers, uh, lack of funding and stuff like that. But we still can produce a very good impact data. So that's how we have to work in a different aspect and collect all this information for one year or two years, then you publish, which is good because it has a quality. Okay, I always look based on quantity, I don't care, but based on quality, how quality your paper is very important. Okay, because nowadays a lot of, uh, you know, the predatory journals and stuff like that is available. So you need to avoid because you need to have your integrity to publish your own paper in a good journal. That's, that's a kind of process that involves in research methodology and also the research ethics as well, okay? So there's a lot of uh, different types of mushrooms as well, but when he talks about poisonous, why I'm introducing all these uh, groups, I will tell the connectivity later on, okay? Because you need to see all these based on research that we are doing hardcore for the main experiments and you know, DNA identification, everything, then it goes where? Of course, it goes to publication, but after that, where? So I'm going to connect this as a story for you all to be able to understand even for a layman or common people that not from science. So mushroom poisoning is another issue and the collaboration between uh, chemists and mycologists and medical officers are always uh, we work together. Okay, this is just not one species, but there are many different species poisoning. And uh, this is another aspect that has been published today, actually. Okay, so when you're looking into the overall poisonous mushroom, as I say, collection data is important. You need to go track how many collection papers on this particular subject, how many deaths have been occurred in the country, how many, uh, like for example, in India, you have this huge diversity of uh, mushrooms, but how many of them have been locally or traditionally known as uh, traditional knowledge or even medicinal potentials or even poisonous uh, to the human being. So these are all the kind of work that we have collected data for the past and, and we are executing now based on a group base, one particular group at each, each time. Okay? Because we have a master's and PhD student to the uh, scope of the research is only for two years and four years and five years. So we need to design the experimental design for them, how many species, how many data you need to graduate. So this is a supervisor's job as well for us to, you know, 
guide them well enough, not just chat to them, you know, okay, do this literature and say, no, you have to be organized with all the de experimental design for particular groups of uh, what they are working on. So this is how we can do a better job to address uh, to the academia and also to the outside. So there are many different type, types of in temperate, but what about in tropical? So when you talk, uh, showing uh, your literature, you have also another form of literature where it is, uh, uh, how do you say this? Uh, actually, it's a compilation in a graph infographic way. So research uh, methodology involves infographic as well. If you can simply understand from an infographic. So basically what is lacking here? So which continent is? And what are the example of mushroom that has been considered as poisoning in particular area in Borneo? And how much of knowledge on the compounds that has been established in the particular mushrooms and how the toxicological studies have been done. So this is the way of how we present the way of delivering the knowledge to many common people. Okay? So actually you need, you can also use this type of infographic in your research publications. It's much more, uh, how to say, it's much more nicer and also informative for many different people because you have your text writing in your paragraphs. However, uh, if you give infographic as an overall uh, image, as a graphical images, it is considered also a very nice publication. Okay, so this is way the way of how we are doing uh, based on the literature search as well. And then you have a presentation of all the, you know, the DNA studies and stuff like that. So because basically my lab is addressing all the issues between the complex uh, names for the mushrooms and the taxonomy of the mushrooms and the ecology of the mushrooms and then you have the chemical metabolites that neurotoxic because why we need this information because this information will go to the medical officers for them to attend what species are they then they are able to treat the patient according to the groups of mushrooms because mushrooms have categorized seven seven uh, consequences there are seven groups actually as a gastrointestinal mycetism and also as a neurotoxic and also there's a lot of different types of uh, causing the toxins to human so we need to know which species are there and how does this species work towards the toxin to the human uh, you need to know all of this process so we are producing this to the medical doctors as well and this is a part of uh, our work and publication is also coming out from this work. So as you can see, out of all these years, we found a recent one during the before the COVID year uh, 2019, we found that one of the species that very closely related to China that happened here in Borneo. So it was a big issue because uh, 19 uh, people were in coma. Uh, sorry, 90 people were admitted in the hospital, two were in coma, because it has the mushroom toxin causing a lot of different for the ages group as well. So we get to know that when children okay, uh, usually can you know go to coma, okay, I see you. But the adults, usually they have the immune system and everything, but still they will have a gastrointestinal irritants like diarrhea, vomiting, excessive dehydration. So you are saving people's life as well based on your publications and information providing like this. So this is the way of how we are integrating towards the outside people and the community around you, how the science is benefiting those people. Okay, and then we also found out that compounds are very important to detect all these uh, chemical compounds which are the neurotoxin. So we are able to identify some of the compounds that found in that mushrooms as well. So what we do with the medical groups is a very basic things, which are the collaboration work where they give us the samples whenever there's a cases uh, occur in each area. So here we have identified the hotspot area during the rainy season. And also we educate them in terms of, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, community contribution 
and also we come up with the guidelines as you can see there's a guideline over here these are the guidelines that we prepare for the state uh, to address these mushroom poisoning issues so there are a lot of things that in forms of publication here but when you talk about posters for awareness programs yes definitely we need to showcase all the mushrooms that are being considered as poisonous so we are saving people as well as part of a science uh, scientist you know as you are scientists you're saving people as well okay so these are the kind of networks that we have to establish when you are looking into the research methodology because when you are looking into research methodology don't just narrow down your ideas just based on the research papers and then your thesis that's it no okay you have to think outside of that particular thing for you to able to recognize being recognized by people and also uh, okay if, let's say if you're working on towards a business thing okay definitely there will be uh, different aspects for a business concept people because how you want to create things and how you want to sell your product is more important okay how you're going to benefit that particular product that's a question so you need to do a lot of survey like for example here whenever we enter any rural villages we call it information qualitatively because questionnaires only because questionnaires this will involve also as part of these because these people's answers are sometimes qualitative but we can produce this based on numbers into quantitative because we get the pattern when we do a lot of different analysis in terms of a different software so educational tools how we producing educational tools this is also a research part in publication or writing okay because you take time you take time to identify you take time to collect all these and you take time to showcase all of your important ones and then you are spending most of the time to educate the community you are spending time to educate uh, the forest rangers you are educating the common children all these involves under the research methodologies and publishing your uh, you know publishing your work as a modules and also as a newspaper articles and stuff like that. okay this is why we need okay this will towards this will uh, lead towards a very comprehensive mushroom identification for for in time and coming soon okay so this is how you have to develop your research ideas then your methodologies you collect all that and then you execute into publication forms in a different forms of publication so then another group also as a glowing mushroom okay this one recently india had published one new species from the bamboo forest which i was very happy to see that because uh, bamboo forest is actually considered they are the kind of substrate that the growing mushroom can be found as well so while we are focusing on these groups okay uh, we also have so many different types of species but when you look into this how are you going to interpret these beauties okay the glowing mushroom so as a common people when you look into this uh, glowing mushrooms you get excited you get colorful they are so beautiful they are glowing okay but for me where do they grow what do they grow why why is it glowing but do you have any information on this species so we need to integrate all these science information to produce common knowledge about glowing mushroom. Why do they glow? So the science facts need to be uh, produced as a common language to people to understand non-science people. So when you look into different forms, okay, uh, in a scientific way, of course, I do a lot of research on their genes. Uh, to looking into the to to looking into their growing intensity, but at the same time, I want to integrate this into a different forms of formulation to increase the growing intensity. So that that is a scientific part. But when it comes to uh, common people, they don't care about how the formulation is uh, made about. But what I care about is how am I going to make it interesting to publicize this into a publication so that people read my book. Then the collections of photos, definitely it's one of the way of how you have to arrange, how to attract the audiences, how to give, you know, it's all 
related. Okay? It's not just taking photos and then you keep it in your hard drive. No, you have to uh, publicize. So when I'm giving a talk like this, of course, I want my audience to be engaged and uh, also mesmerized with the, all these wonders of hidden, hidden from us, actually. They are under the ground and nobody knows about them. So I want to outcast the art. I know the beauties that, you know, always there in the jungle. So after seeing this, I hope you all, you know, explore a lot of jungle tracks and stuff like that to have and more. So this is how the way of, you know, we are communicating. And then once you get the mushrooms, uh, definitely you're going to see the mushroom and then you might be asking what is the species and then what do they is that are they edible or you know poisonous so these are the common questions that i get from all my non-science people and also the citizen science so they are considered uh, you see they look so many different variations but you see when photographs can tell these are all different species but when you're looking into the dna these are all just one species. Can you believe that? So this is why it's so important when you are looking into morphological, just looking at morphology, you cannot tell their species level. You need to explore the DNA, and identify them, okay, basic characteristics under the microscope and stuff and etc. And sometimes when I go, I mean, during my PhD, I have an opportunity to go to all the Amazonian forests to look into the you know, the mushrooms, and also I'm comparing the tropical clay forest mushrooms, and this is the biggest project that I've ever had, where until now, we are solving a lot of issues, taxonomical issues from these two. These are found in India as well, and uh, they are common in uh, Southeast Asia as well. So all the tropical area, you can see these mushrooms when you are in the jungle. And also there are uh, different groups of edible, groups of uh, cantrils, they call the golden cantrils. Huh? We find also in India and also Tapai. And then what do I do in the methodology section? We do collect the fungus, we bring back to the lab, and then we culture them. We culture them and we collect the culture and then we start to grow them in the laboratory condition. And after that, once the laboratory condition has been grown, then we introduce to farmers to you know, try out the edible groups of mushrooms to, for them to grow in a local basis in a community mode. Okay? So there are sometimes, uh, there are a lot of our hidden groups that you didn't know, even know they are existed. So look at them, how beautiful they are arranged. All these are the careful observation under the microscope, stereoscope, and stuff like that. So the scientific part, uh, for non-science people, you just can ignore. But the thing is, the beauty and uh, the artistic way of thinking, uh, how to outcast the mushroom in a way of, you know, publicizing them into the real world. That is important because the non-science people, they think, ah, okay, these are only for mushroom people. No, it's a wrong perception. As a non-science people, you have the arts and the component, how to analyze, how to integrate that thing into a management level or business level or whatever the concepts are. Like for me, I need a graphic designer. I need an artist who can see differently from the part where I see as a uh, the core science. Okay, so that we can integrate this and then we make it in a different way of uh, thinking. Because sometimes you can see that poster paintings, painting forms, murals are all uh, using a lot of nature base. So we have to show this you know, beauty so that people will get to know that mushroom is also uh, you know showing a lot of different artistic way as you can see these are all looks like a beehive right but they are not beehive these are all mushroom and this underneath the mushroom spot okay looks looks like this one looks like a coral base but they are under the wood decay mushroom okay they're all found under on the dead wood or dead log. Then, of course, a lot of mushrooms are cultivated and we do a lot of enzyme studies and we test on the enzymes and then the research goes on and on. And then we have also insect related fungi. Okay, the insects that you see when it comes up as a zombie, okay, when you, everybody know 
zombie um, movies, right? Okay, you have watched all the Train to Busan, or the, you know, the World Z, all these uh, movies, right? But the thing is, the term zombie is also found on insect fungi. We call the insect fungi, which kills the insect as a host where they manipulate their behavior. So you see, the scientific knowledge, if like that kind of very cool scientific knowledge, science fact, you need to tell people as well. So how you are telling them is in a very fun way of, you know, integrating the integrating a So these are the wonders of, uh, you know, zombie fungi that you can see in the nature how many and how different they are how the story can be, you know, told to the people in a common language. So what do they do? Okay, they manipulating your brain, okay, the insect's uh, brain. And then uh, this uh, coordination is lost, behavioral loss. So the soldiers will leave all the infected ones into the ground or even into the, then away from the colony. And then these ants will be died and then after three days or four days, the mushroom will sprout. So you see, the life cycle is so cool. If you can see in Netflix, there's a documentary on the uh, zombie fungi. So you can see how they are made in the terms of, uh, you know, media level. So it's also considered as a publication because the copyright is towards the people who join. And then for a general purpose, uh, we do also introduce the kind of, uh, you know, common language that here in Sabah, as I mean, in Malaysia, we use Malay as a medium for us to educate the local people on particular groups of mushrooms over there. So this is one of the poster that we uh, publicize in, you know, in, in any of the forums, or any of the campaigns or whatever. So after all these, um, uh, research methodology, public outreach is also considered as a method methodology. So how you quant qualitatively and quantifying your public outreach programs, okay? Because when I do a public outreach program, I do not want the public outreach is just based on, you know, uh, talks and then done. Okay, bye-bye. No. I want the public outreach to be published as a manuscript and also as a modules, academic modules. I would love to introduce all these when we can collaborate in the future. Okay, so this conservation and awareness is one of the part of our hardcore or our, you know, output from the research grants that we all sign to. So usually when it's a big grants, we need to outcast all our research output. So in a way of communicating towards the public, yes, definitely we choose the teachers, we choose the children from the schools, and then we educate them. And also the science knowledge that we are transferring to them is based on the modules that we prepare for the past, uh, you know, 10 years, actually. So we always update the knowledge and also we update the modules for them to work on it. And then we publish all these output based on their interview, based on the student's interest. Okay, for example, when you are doing a public outreach, how come people saying that you cannot publish this? No, actually, you can publish with the data that you collect from the particular trip. Okay, let's say if you're conducting an outreach for three days, okay, the three days, whatever the, uh, the, the trips is about, the talks is about, okay, how does the qualitative uh, questionnaires, like questionnaires, like basically towards the teachers and the students is also uh, you know, important data for us to publish that. Okay, what type of uh, publication? That's you can figure out in terms, in terms of your own interest. Which journal do you want to submit? So you have to look for the kind of journal that looking into public outreach, conservation effort, and awareness programs. So there are many different journals available for conservation. So this is part of conservation. So you can publish these data as well. And then local interactions, so the local people's interaction and training of all these young minds and also training students and training the forest rangers are very important because this is a potential field for tourism, nature, nature tourism. So once you have all these 
information, you can, uh, you know, have a micro tourism as a part of this. Okay, this can be done in one community. So when there is a one community, when you all exposed to, and you work on the research uh, for three years or four years, then you establish uh, the knowledge to into a you know state level or the country level. This is how we integrate the knowledge. So this is a successful project that we have been doing uh, for community until now for in the Borneo because here in Borneo we still have a lot of uh, larger portion of uh, rural areas where there are no electricity, there are no water. So these are the areas that we always focus and we go and you know introduce and see what are the types of mushroom that they can develop. So these are all involved under my research methodology as well because this is under the public outreach part. Uh, so always include in your program your grants, your public, uh, your component for your objectives uh, for your research. Do involve the public outreach as well. It's, it's one of the way of how you integrate the science and the non-science aspect. Okay, and then the students' activities that involves a uh, lot of uh, data collection. So when you, I'm going to the forest, I will be looking only my favorite groups of mushrooms, but I'm using only two eyes. Okay, but when you are gathering many different people, they have a different views in the forest where each eye is differently working towards finding the mushroom. Sometimes some people, the tiniest mushroom as well, they can find. And one of the mushrooms that they find, I have published as a new species as well. So you see how these are contributing to a publication as well. So the children's uh, activities that we conducted in 2019, uh, 18, 17, it helped to publish another new species for, for Malaysia or for me. Okay, so sometimes this is also, you have to integrate this into a research methodology. How you design, that's your part of your job, where you need to design that in terms of how you are delivering this as an output and it's a measurable objective. So they get also a lot of fun activities. And also, I use a lot of different models for my mushroom. And I give them as a modules into the classroom and they come up with the output, right? You see, a simple publication, a recipe book, okay? But how many of you all can, you know, see, we have seen a lot of mushroom uh, recipe book or it's a cooking recipe, but mushroom, just focusing on the mushrooms, we want to, you know, uh, we wanted to have the publication. So from the classrooms, we take out the aspects of the modules and then we publish this as an ebook. Okay, ebook for the university. So, this is part of the publications as well. So, whatever the things that you are designing, these are the children, only my students on the class uh, batch of uh, 2019 and 20, where we collected all the information and they make their own recipe in terms of their local cuisine. So, we can create this kind of things uh, quite a lot, actually, in terms of publishing our work in a different module. And then educational storybooks. As I showed to you all the glowing mushrooms just now, the glowing fungi, okay, how can we integrate this uh, as a publication? Yes, definitely we need to outreach a uh, program uh, when you're talking about non-science people or the common people, uh, non-science people right, especially, where they want to understand what is a glowing mushroom. So we have to we have to deliver this in terms of um, you know in a storyline or is it a local folks and traditional based kind of uh, information. So what we did, the students of the batch 2020 and 21, we did this in a, during the COVID time where we used the folklore of the mushrooms, growing mushrooms where the bunians and then the involving how the hero has saved the mom and everything. So it's a kind of interactive way and the children loves it because when we do uh, outreach program, we bring this kind of uh, out, uh, output to engage with them and find out how interesting the book is. So that is also a data that you can collect. So here, there are many different forms of mushrooms that grow. So now you're all able to know there are four types of mushrooms that can blow in a different way. 
So these are the kind of information from the story that I have told you from the beginning, uh, all the research methods of studying mushrooms until the output of my work in a way of bringing out to the common people. And then these are all my experiences looking for mushrooms for many, many years. Uh, so this is my 16th year and I'm still always looking for mushrooms and we do describe mushrooms. We have so much fun. Of course, I have evolved so much as well and I'm getting old as well. Huh? So these are the kind of fun that we do as a scientist. So it's amazing to uh, share all these moments with you all so that in the future we can always collaborate in a different terms uh, of, uh, you know, publications or even ideas, share ideas. And, you know, you can educate your children and also your students in a very integrative way of approaching science. And these are the final outputs. Like you see, when you want to publish your work, definitely scientific core of methodology is totally different from the outreach program. But you still have to do, do an academian jobs, right? Like academia is always, it's about your how, many, how much of grant you're getting, how many publications you're doing, that's it. But I'm, I'm advising, uh, not to say advice, I suggest to all of you, when you are publishing your work, don't care about the citation. Okay? Don't care about the citation, even though it's, because you know, the citation is part of that process will come. So don't too much worry about publishing your work after one year or two, because research takes at least one to two years. But if you can publish it, as, uh, like, you know, short papers, things like that in between, it's fine. But the thing is, don't stress out yourself and burn out by just focusing on the publication within one year. <laughs> when within one year, that means you are really super, but I agree that two years, it takes at least one research two years to publish one or two good things. Okay? So these are the outputs that we have collaborative works uh, from different people. And, uh, you know, I myself also, while I'm teaching, I have to publish as well. So we have to, time management is also very important. So the research article writing is actually takes a lot of time and we are not native speakers. So you discuss with your uh, reviews or your colleagues to review your paper before you submit to it, you know, because you need to know that, you know, you can't be like perfect, you know, you can't be perfect in terms of writing because everybody has their own, uh, you know, weakness in writing. But the thing is, when you are doing the same over and over, you get really, you know, committed and also very familiar with uh, addressing the comments from the reviewers. And these are all the mushroom networking and collaborations that I've done so far, you know, for the past years. And uh, it's been an amazing experience for me to share with you all so that you all can as well be part of it if you are in the academia or institution. And these are all my wonderful students and those who benefited from the project, who also completed their masters and PhD. And now this is, uh, after COVID, we are starting back our, all our work, right? So it's going to be a, a roller coaster, okay? But as I said, it's uh, my philosophy is always, if given the opportunity, we create the community. That's all uh, I can say today. And I hope I have benefit, it brings the benefit for you all to think broadly on your research group and your research methodology and to publicize your research articles, okay? So with that, I thank everyone who listened to my talk. And uh, that's all for today. And if any questions, I welcome all your questions. And uh, I try to answer maximum about how many questions we don't know. And uh, always welcome for collaboration. So with that, I end my talk. And thank you for listening today. That's all.